In this video, I want to talk about dry firing for beginners. So, first thing to note is that shooting is a very unnatural uh, thing for us human beings to do, especially shooting a pistol. So, uh, we got to understand that this finger is having to move independently of the rest of these uh, fingers, and that's very unnatural. We're typically going to get sympathetic movement when we try to apply any strength or force with this finger and that can move the gun. That's why you don't typically hit exactly where you want to, especially when they say you're jerking the trigger. Um, that means you're pulling it so fast, putting so much force that you're sympathetically moving. That's something that you, you can jerk the trigger. You can pull it as fast as you want as long as you're not moving the gun. But dry fire practice is one of the only ways, one of the only ways that you're going to be able to get to that point where you can pull it as fast as you as you want and put as much force on it without causing any other sympathetic movement which would end up moving the gun or moving your sights off the intended intended target. So anyways, some of the things that you're going to have to do um, beforehand, depending on what you're working on, one of the things that you need to do at the range beforehand, you kind of need to understand how your firearm is going to recoil and what it's going to feel like, when it's going to go off and stuff like that, how much control you need to have in your firearm in order to control it under recoil. And uh, that's something that you need to get a really good feel for at the range. And next thing is you need to understand where your, um, where your firearm is going to, uh, like when your sights are aligned somewhere, where your bolt's going to impact it at a certain range relative to where you're holding your sights. You need to understand that kind of stuff. So when you're practicing like a close range shot, you might want to get used to, say if you're uh, shooting at something like this, one of the items I recommend, sticky notes. Say if, uh, and another item, permanent marker. So you can say uh, you're trying to hit the middle here. Say you're trying to practice at 25 yards. There's some firearms that will require what's called a six o'clock hold which will be basically aligning your sights down at the very bottom of the target and then it'll hit at the center. Others will uh, require, uh, others, very few will require it to be at the top to completely cover it in order to hit the center. And others, most firearms, uh, most pistols today um, will be fine at 25 yards uh, aiming exactly uh, where you intend to, uh, to basically impact. So you need to understand that. Now, if you're shooting at five yards, um, because there is some height over bore, uh, your sights are raised a little bit taller than the actual bore itself, you might actually, if you're trying to hit right here on this sticky note exactly, you might actually have to aim a little bit higher to compensate for that distance between the bore and the sights. So those are things to keep in mind. These are things that you need to iron out in your training class and you need to uh, you know, pay attention to you know, just to get to know your gun. Then you can move on to dry firing effectively. And there's other things too that you need to find out at the range as well. So those are just some of the more important things. And the items that I just brought out, those are probably uh, one of the more valuable things. Those are, that's your targets basically. You have your sticky note, you have your your permanent marker. You can make a smaller target if you wish. And then the other one is basically here, snap caps. This is an A-zoom, and the reason I recommend A-zooms, um, they're not really the best, I guess you could say, as far as like feeding and stuff like that, and uh, durability of like the rim. But what they have is a little piece of rubber, a piece of hard rubber or polymer in there that absorbs the shock from the firing pin hitting it. So I can basically dry fire this a lot without causing um, much of any damage to my firing pin because dry firing it, um, you can, if you dry fire it in a literal sense where you don't even have a snap cap in your firearm, you can actually end up damaging your firing pin. So it, it it's just kind of an inherent thing. Uh, you got to be careful of that. So these are designed, these firing pins are designed to be hitting primers. So if you get something that replicates a primer but absorbs the hit, then you're pretty much good to go. You're not going to affect the longevity of your uh, your firearm or the parts therein. So anyways, um, obviously we want to make sure our firearm is unloaded and a snap cap, a good way, uh, it's a, that A-zoom, purple 
or red or whatever, high visibility, paint them orange if you want to. Uh, so anyways, um, the next thing is when you have all your items and everything, you understand your prerequisites, what are the focuses that you can have? What are drills that you can uh, work on? Well, we got to understand uh, briefly the difference between a drill and a course of fire. A drill is something that you do over and over and over and over again to make it instinctive. That's things like grip, getting a good sight picture relative to your fire. What sight picture do you need at different ranges with a certain fire? Your trigger control for that certain firearm or, or what have you. Um, if you're more advanced, I would actually say that there's a type of uh, trigger control that you can apply to almost all firearms and you can have equal success. Um, general handling, you know, safe handling, uh, checking a firearm, uh, doing manipulations like malfunctions, reloads, uh, your draw stroke. These are all things that you can drill, 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 drill. On the other hand, you also have courses of fire. Like those people that are wanting to do like a, a one to five drill, like you're doing one shot here, two shots here, three shots here, four shots there, five shots there. A one to five drill, it's not actually a drill, it's a course of fire. Um, you know, all, all these little things like uh, uh, the bill drill, that's not a drill, that's a course of fire. That's not something that you're supposed to be doing over and over and over and over and over again without break in order to become instinctive. That's a test. So it's a course of fire that's used for evaluation. So I uh, noticed in my items I didn't put a shot timer on there because this is the beginning of it. It's not necessary to really get that in hand. You just need to get familiar with all the little functions. So, next thing I want to talk about is uh, once we've you, you understand like all the little things that you can work on, we gotta understand speed, and we need to learn to control this. A lot of people want to come blazing out uh, when they start their dry fire. They want to come blazing out. They want to draw, take up the safety, and put an accurate uh, dry shot on uh, the notional target. That's great and all, but here's the thing. You need to basically master your steps, and this is your opportunity to do it. Like from this holster, this is a new holster that I'm testing out, and alien gear outside the waistband holster. Um, it's pretty tight. Uh, this holster is not actually for this firearm. Uh, this is just a... Uh, just happens to fit it relatively well but I'm testing it with it so uh, what I have to do is kind of get reacquainted with this firearm because it has a manual safety that I can barely reach just kind of an example you can learn uh, uh, basically you gotta control your speed because if I try to come blazing out of here I may or may not hit the safety and even then I was off so right there my sights looked like this it wasn't like this. It wasn't nice and uh, center line. It was. It was. Uh, it was basically like this. My grip wasn't all all that great because I just rushed into it and treated it like every other gun. So I have to get there and I have to get sure with my grip, and then extend out. And I don't even fire uh, fire a notional shot at that point. I'm just trying to get a good grip, get the safety off, and get to the point where I'm getting my point of aim, my uh, sight picture. I'm getting my sight picture with this firearm and that is a natural point of aim. So that's just an example, is controlling that speed, not trying to go John Wick right out of the box. We can't do that. These are the steps to become John Wick, if you will. A lot of practice between range time. Again, we're doing something very unnatural to make it natural. If you get away from this for two weeks and you don't touch a gun, don't expect that you're going to be able to shoot as good as you did last time. It just doesn't work that way. We're doing a natural things that we don't do every day. Just like a gymnast, if you learn to do a backflip within a day and then you don't do it for a couple months, you're probably not going to remember how to do it if you learned it in a day and you didn't make it a normal routine to do those motions that caused you to be able to do a backflip. So if your body isn't at that flexible state or you don't have that good muscular control, you're probably not going to be able to do it. Now the next thing is duration of practice. How long should you practice for? Well, my recommendation is only do practice as long as you're actually gain, uh, making gains. Again, this is where you have permission to start off slow. 
you want to be able to go as fast as you can hit accurately and in a notional sense because you're using snap caps you're making sure your firearm is unloaded so basically we, we don't want to overwhelm ourselves we want to basically practice in a way where we can practice every day and that means not wearing ourselves out you can make in incremental growth without doing that the gym rat routine where basically you're burning yourself out all the time you don't need to do that you can start working on your grip and just work on uh, getting a nice high purchase on the pistol in the holster, putting your hand in the proper area, defeating that holster and getting to here. You can work on your micro steps. You have permission to do that. And if that's all you want to work on day one, then do that. It's your schedule. Do what you're comfortable with. If you're not even comfortable using snap caps or even dry firing, then don't do it. Just work on your handling. Learn how to load it with a snap cap. And like how to basically uh, insert a magazine and load it with the uh, slide lock as a slide release or basically learn to do little power strokes you can do that learn how to take the safety off on on and off so basically going from here to here taking the safety off because this is the point where you can take a safety off it's it's still a good firing position if you have to take a close shot, right? So that's just an example. So only practice as long as you can actually make gains because we don't want to practice bad technique because that's the whole purpose of this is to get good technique so we can take it out to the range, confirm it, and get our body used to these good techniques so we can start shooting like John Wick, right? So anyways... Uh, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and give me a like, subscribe, and hope to see you guys around in the next video on dry fire. So anyways, thanks a lot for watching. You guys have a good one.